Hello everybody, this is Paul Neeson with Torah Life Ministries and today we have a great guest, Allison, on the show. Allison, say hello to the Torah Life audience. Hey everybody. Uh, Allison has a great blog about modesty that I want people to know about. And Allison, first, how do you first get interested in the topic of modesty? Um, well, I've actually always been raised with the idea that we're to dress modestly. You don't want to show anything um, because you don't want to be a stumbling block to others. But um, in the past two years, I've really realized that modesty isn't just how you dress. It's more in how you live. It's every action. And uh, I don't know, I just, I really, I got into studying scripture. And I just started learning more and more about it. And then I read a lot of great books. Um, one of those is by the Botkin Sisters. And it's called uh, So Much More. And it was really awesome. That really encouraged me. And as you're growing up as a young girl in today's society, how do you feel when you see women out there, not only just young girls, but women in general, that they're dressed so immodest and showing off their body. How does that make you feel? Uh, well, at first I hide my face and I'm like, oh my goodness, I can't believe they're actually wearing that or more like not wearing anything. And then um, I had a job for a short while and it was in a mall and I saw a lot of girls that would come in, they barely had anything on. It really just broke my heart that they didn't value themselves enough to preserve uh, their body for their husband, uh, whether that be in relationships or in just how they dress. Is there a particular way that you've been led to approach these women or is it through your blog and hope they find that and read that? Um, I haven't really necessarily approached anyone yet. Uh, I'm getting more bold as I grow older, but I am, I'm really hoping that my blog will uh, grow with readers and that they will be encouraged. I really, I don't want to, I guess my, my thing is I don't want to try to put anyone down. I, won't, I don't want them to feel like I'm getting on to them, oh you need to put clothes on. I just want to encourage them to realize how beautiful they are and how much they are loved by the king and that they should treasure that and honor that. And so that's really my approach so far. When we hear about modesty and we think about wearing less, but it's not just wearing less, it's also how tight the clothes are. Yes. And uh, yes. The, the designers today will actually make the clothes so tight to reveal the whole body. And that's just yeah. as bad as nakedness, in my exactly. opinion. Exactly. It is. I agree. I agree. And uh, so how do we tell or, or, or show, or is there a way we can get people to realize uh, that modesty is more than just clothing in general, not even just clothing? There, I think for me what really made me realize it was getting into the Word and through getting into the Word I realized it's how you live and so when you see someone living a modest life not you know not just in dress like you said but you know they're they're meek and they're kind and they're encouraging and they just love people in general to me that that portrays modesty and so I guess my thing is, let it be an action. So just live modestly. Sure. One of the things I say often is modesty is a heart issue. Yes. It's, and, and that's where it should stem from. And so there are two things I want to talk to you about that I talk about often with uh, people about modesty that they aren't really looked at in today's world as immodest. But I feel there's an issue with it. And you might not. I, I just uh, met her a little while ago. So <laughs> I'm not sure. So this is fresh. It hasn't been pre-scripted. -pre uh, but I did look at her blog, and her blog was wonderful. But most people don't address these two things. As a man, I feel it's a big part of immodesty. So uh, I want to see what your opinion about them is, and more things might come up. But the first one is the idea of makeup. Uh, makeup. What's your opinion about makeup? Um, I do own makeup, um, but I actually I prefer a very natural look. If you're going to wear makeup, just use it to increase the beauty that's only already there. I mean, you're beautiful as you are. You don't need makeup. But if you're going to wear it, go for a very natural look, very light colors, no blue or green or hot pink or anything. Um, but I actually, I was talking to my friends about this and I feel this way too, but it's like false advertising. You know, since I'm not married and if I were to find a guy, I'd rather him know what he's getting into already you know, all my blemishes, my red undertone. So just don't try to cover up who you are. So if you're going to wear makeup, use it to increase the beauty that you already have. It's very good you say that because the poor guy, I mean, he marries this woman and, and in marriage, women aren't necessarily putting on makeup even for their husbands because yeah. 
they're going to sleep with no makeup on. They wake up and then they put makeup on for the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's just... I say, you know, if it's going to change the way you look completely, that is not good. You know, I don't have a problem with women wearing makeup if it still looks like the same person. Yes. But when you look like a different person and you see these magazines that say like stars without makeup, they don't even look the same. I know. It's, I know. it's, it's just crazy. Now, another thing that most people don't address, but uh, it's been put on my heart to share because I definitely think that Satan has a way of making people think there's not an issue with this. Mm -hmm. And it's the issue of high heels. Now, I didn't say <laughs> heels. There's a difference between heels and high heels, but I think high heels are definitely immodest. And what's your opinion about that? Um, well, I actually just had a lesson in this last winter. <laughs> I have a winter formal at our homeschool group, and I always want some high heels just because I've never worn any. I didn't know what it felt like. They always look good, um, at least I thought so. And then I got them, and I couldn't walk in them at all. I'm clumsy as is, and those just made it really, really bad. And uh, my mom is saying, you need to return those and get some heels, like inch, maybe two. And I was like, no, I was stubborn. That was my rebellious stage, I guess. And I finally realized I'm going to get hurt wearing these. And once I returned them, I realized how they were affecting uh, my attitude, I guess, because I was... Hmm, how do I explain this? I was portraying myself as a woman who was trying to catch someone's attention, and I didn't want to do that. And so I ended up returning them, and I got some heels, and I felt very feminine in those, but they weren't um, attention seekers. And so we actually, my mom and I, this is going to be very <laughs> blunt, but we'll see a young lady uh, or even an adult woman walking around in four or five inch heels and they go, oh, those are hooker heels <laughs> because they do well, bring attention to the yes. body. Well, so. so you bring up two important aspects of the high heels. Number one is the, the attention they bring, but the other one is the attitude they give you. Exactly. And uh, those are two great aspects because I often talk about the way it makes somebody look and actually high heels, uh, the designers make it to make the, the woman's backside stick out. <laughs> <laughs> and, but but then I never thought about the attitude that it puts on uh, the woman too because mm -hmm. she's desiring that so that's a very good topic right. so that's excellent I also do notice that uh, you know like you said there are all little girls probably stumble when they first start wearing high heels mm -hmm. but then as they, they grow as they get used to it not only do they learn how to walk in high heels but they learn to walk a certain way in those high heels yes and uh, it's definitely an attention grabber to uh, many men out there and uh, hooker heels I like that I like it's that. very heartbreaking too because you'll go say the mall or some big store or even just walking down the city I, i'm from a small town compared to jacksonville florida but you'll see like 13 year old girls wearing these five inch heels and the skirt that's skin tight you can see all their curves if they even have curves yet and you know that they're they're doing it for attention that affirmation they're seeking affirmation in men and that's not what you want to do you want to seek your affirmation in yahweh Exactly, so. and it's a sad thing that's happening today because it's, uh, and it's not getting any better, it's getting worse, it's I getting can tell worse. people that. And I have a strong heart to talk about modesty, and when people hear that, many of them don't want to hear that. It's a heart issue, it's not a dress issue, mm -hmm. but of course we have to address the dress, and people just don't want to hear that. Now, here's another one. Okay. <laughs> now, I, I don't think you've heard about this one before, and uh, we'll see how her reaction is, everybody, <laughs> because if you know me, you know I bring this one up. Uh, I see a different, uh, a, a modesty issue with, you know, shaving. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of women out there that say, I must be crazy if I think I'm going to suggest they go in the world without shaving their legs. And I say, well, if you were really modest, the world wouldn't be seeing your legs, yeah. so nobody would know if you're shaving or not. Yeah. My issue really isn't with a, a woman shaving her legs, it's, 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 why she's doing it and it's really because she's wearing a bikini or she's wearing some short shorts and she doesn't want to show hairy legs so if somebody's married out there and your wife decides to shave or not that's between you and her not the world but when you're showing off certain areas your underarms and your legs you know you're worried about it being smooth and not shaving so what do you feel about shaving have you ever thought about it you're a I young have, girl and tell I us i have actually and um, i know there are many girls who are going to laugh at this because Okay, I don't wear shorts anymore unless I'm at home. And then it's just me and my family, you know. So that's not really an issue. But 
uh, a couple of years ago during the winter, you're only wearing pants. And so I wouldn't shave all winter because no one's going to see my legs. I don't really don't care. I'm not married. And even if I was, that's his. If he wants me to, I'll do it. But um, I've actually, I have stop shaving my legs unless it gets all right now there are moments where like the itching gets unbearable and then i shave just to relieve the the sensation of itching but um i do wear capris so if i'm wearing like long capris i will shave my lower leg just because i don't want to see the black hair everywhere but uh no i, I really i don't shave anymore this is a society thing a woman, most women today, they don't think about shaving their arms and they won't shave their arms, even if they're wearing no sleeves or short sleeve shirts, but they have such a desire to shave their legs. Mm -hmm. And uh, from my understanding, and not all women, but a good amount of women, if you never start shaving to begin with, the hair on your arms is, is very light and not yep, going to be I seen haven't much. I have shaved my arms. Yeah, and you can't. Long. Now, if you would have never shaved your legs, the hair on your legs would have exactly. been similar to that. But see, I was 10. Yeah. Here's the story. <laughs> <laughs> I'd seen my mom shave, my, shave her legs and I was like, oh, that's what I want to do. I want to be a grown up and shave my legs. And she told me, no, you're too young. I shaved them anyway. <laughs> and so that started the snowball effect. Because once you start, you can't stop because it just gets thicker and darker. And so I really honestly regret that. Sure. And I always think about that. I have two little girls. Like, when does somebody say, okay, you're this age and now it's time to start shaving your body? It's just. Exactly. Uh, and, and even for men out there, you know, when is a boy, oh, oh, your son, now it's time to start shaving what our creator put there. It just, and it just instills this thing in them that's just not the way it should be. And for me, from a girl's, about the, the, the men shaving, from a girl's standpoint, um, you know, if you're in the city and you, I don't agree with the guys wearing short shorts or shorts. I like pants. And Hallelujah. And, good, good. Know, I'm a country girl at heart. If a guy was wearing jeans and boots, that's attractive, not shorts with flip Well, that's flops. a problem right there we need to discuss because most country men in tight jeans. No, not uh, tight jeans. Yeah. Not tight jeans. And boots is not good. Okay. But, um, yeah, I see these boys shaving their legs. I'm like, that's just not natural yeah, there's some, at all. There's it's something just, called manscaping oh. today where men are shaving their bodies. And it's just, really? it's just a crazy thing. Yes. Oh. And it's just their bodies, not just their face, but their whole bodies. And it's absolutely crazy I, mm -mm. okay here's another one men have senses and like the high heels it's not only the way they look but it's also you might not know this but the designers make the high heels to make a sound a clicking sound mm -hmm. so even if a man is in the other room and he hears that clicking sound it alerts his senses to there's a woman in that room with high heels and then his his testosterone is going to say well let me go see that woman on her high heels because what high heels do but the, the, the enemy knows how to appeal to our senses, whether it's our hearing, our seeing. What about the idea of perfumes? Mm -hmm. uh, do you think there's any connection between immodesty and a woman wearing perfume? I've actually been thinking a lot, that, a lot about that recently because um, I received a bottle of perfume for my birthday and it smells so good. Now when I put it on, I really don't think about other people smelling it. I'm like, oh, I just want to smell this all day. It's just so uh, fragrant. But I was actually, I put it on some this morning, and I was, as I was spraying, I was thinking, why do I wear this? Is it for me, or is it so other people smell it? And usually I think about other girls that be like, oh, where'd you get that? And I could tell them, but I, I never, the thought never crossed my mind until this week, actually, about perfume and men. And so that's actually been on my heart now that you mention it. Yeah. So I'm still working through that one. See, we have to do the, uh, the research mm -hmm. about where these things come from and why. Okay. And like for high heels, if you do the research, we see that the, the, biggest, the, the, the most popular prostitutes in town wore the biggest high heels. And they came right from the prostitution of the house of, of, of Paris and right to yeah. the runways of New York City. Uh, and, and clothing and everything, we see all that. And, and perfume, they have their sensuous backgrounds and so on. Uh, so all these things have backgrounds. So when we do the history, I think it helps us realize these things. Now, hopefully uh, we're brought up in a household where our parents are, are living modest, so it's easier for us to. But many times it's not, and it's, uh, we have to make changes after we've lived a certain way. And I never used to think about dressing modestly, even as a man, but then I had to make that change. and. It's a challenge because other people are seeing it. It's not something mm -hmm. we're dealing with inside, would yep. you say? Yep, I agree, I agree. And for me, it was easier because my parents have raised me in that mindset. And I honestly, I can't fathom not 
being raised to dress modestly. And actually, one day we were at a concert, a Christian concert, and uh, this dad, an older dad, it'd be like me holding my dad's hand, which I do often. I love holding my dad's hand. And I was thinking, oh, that's so sweet to see a teenage daughter holding her dad's hand in this society, because that's, as, uh, in today's society, oh, you don't want to touch your parents. They're, they're idiots. You're, you know everything kind of thing. And I'm thinking, that's so sweet that she's holding her daddy's hand. And then I looked at what she was wearing, and I'm thinking, how can he let her dress like that? She had the hooker heels, and her stomach was showing. She had short shorts. And how can you let your baby girl, when you're a man and you know what guys go through, how can you let her uh, be thrown out to the wolves, I guess, is the phrase I would be looking for. So it, it just broke my heart. That's a great point. And uh, to reach other young women out there, or either old women or women of any age, or even men, you have a blog. What's the blog title where people can go to see your blog and see all the things you share? My blog is marvelouslymodest.wordpress.com. Uh, and that's, yeah, I haven't actually bought the site yet, so I don't get a fancy just.com. <laughs> now, besides uh, the, the website, uh, can people contact you? Are you on uh, Facebook or any other social media? I am. I have a Facebook page. It's facebook.com backslash encouraging modesty. And then you can also email me. I have a marvelously modest blog at gmail.com. Feel free to send me a message. I love to hear from y'all. Um, comment on my blog, comment on my Facebook page, whatever you'd like to do. Great, great. And what else would you like to say about modesty before we finish here? Oh, goodness. There's so much to say. I don't know what to choose. Um, say, go I to guess, my blog now. Yeah, go to my blog. I'd like that. No. Um, I guess just really search out your heart and see if you feel conflicted, if you've been having this sort of, you know, you dress this way, you feel just this sort of nagging. Why do you feel that? You know, search that out. Go to the scriptures. Search out the scriptures. There's a reason. That's the Spirit trying to tell you something. So don't, don't just put clothes on and go out into the world. Put your, put your outfit on. Okay, what am I trying to portray? Why am I wearing this? You know, what are my goals in this outfit? So that's, that's really encouraging to hear someone else say that, and I just encourage you as well to do that. So as we're talking about drawing attention to ourselves, mm -hmm. uh, one of the things I talk about, and it is mentioned in the scriptures, but I don't talk about it from a scriptural standpoint. I talk about it from a modesty standpoint. Okay. Uh, as a man, and maybe or perhaps not as a woman, you haven't seen this, one of the most, I would say, sexiest or attractive parts to a woman is often her hair. Mm -hmm. And there's a big a controversial topic in the whole biblical world today of our head coverings, are they righteous or not? Mm -hmm. uh, it's one thing from a scriptural standpoint, from, from a modesty standpoint, what's your opinion about hair? Well, as you see, I have a lot of it. <laughs> um, that's another thing that's been on my heart recently. I've, I've, we're at Revive and I'm seeing all these lovely young ladies with these beautiful head coverings. And, um, you know, my hair's naturally red, so I can't really help that. But I don't believe you should color your hair or you know, bring attention to your hair. That's just me, my opinion. No scriptural you know, background on that, that's just me. Um, but I'm not against a head covering. You know, I'm not wearing one right now. But I do, I have been thinking about it a lot recently. I do wear a lot of hats, um, but I don't have any scarves that'll actually stay on my hair. But I have been wondering recently if that's something that only your husband should see. You know, it's sort of like, um, I don't want to cut my hair because, you know, in the Bible it talks about that being a woman's glory and how, you know, my dad loves long hair and he, he won't allow my sister and I to cut it. And I wonder if, you know, we're supposed to protect that. You know, I, I have been asking that question. If we're supposed to guard our hair and save that for when we get married and reveal it to our husbands. But I haven't searched the scriptures or researched it at all yet. Well, that's a, that's a great thing to be thinking about. I've met many women on both sides of it, and uh, a lot of women out there feel the way you're, you're investigating, mm -hmm. and uh, they only reveal their hair to their husband, and their husband feels so blessed that he's the only one that gets to see his wife's beauty and glory, uh, and, and he feels that it's something special for them. And, uh, but it, it's, 
I believe hair can be worn in a modest way, yes. but often it does attract attention because uh, it's very far and few between, far and few women who will actually, that are going to let their hair show and not feel like they have to make it look uh, very yeah, attractive. Like, like today, um, I just got my hair cut and styled and they curled it all pretty. I just loved it and when I got home and ever since then it's just been, I get a shower and I let it go natural. I don't really like to style my hair, you know, because that does bring attention to it. Sure, so. sure. So that's another just a topic that you can see more information on my website about with people uh, and women who ha some have head coverings and some don't. Uh, but the whole idea of modesty, again, it's a heart issue, folks. Mm -hmm. and, yes. and, and seek your heart, and, but also no matter where your heart is and no matter where your attention is, uh, you know, I would say uh, the attention doesn't cancel out the appearance. Yeah. So ladies, you might have the purest heart and no bad attention at all. But right. still, if you're dressing immodest, it's causing another brother to stumble possibly. Yeah, you don't, you don't want to be a stumbling block. You don't. And that's, that's another big thing. Exactly. Well, thank you so much for being on the show today. Thank and you. thank you for watching. If you have any comments or questions, post them below the video. Make sure you get to a blog and shalom, shalom. Shalom. Come out of the world, oh my people, seek the truth, avoid the evil, learn Yahweh's ways, Torah life ministries, come out of the world.